Now, Liam Halligan is in the studio, which always makes me slightly nervous because I just feel, Liam, that you're going to come in with bad news about the economy. But then I, I read that retail sales are up. This is good news. Dave, the last thing I want to do is make you nervous. Please forgive me. Do you know me. what? What, <laughs> we, what I like about you, Liam, is that it's so obvious I have no idea what I'm talking about when you come in the studio. Normally I manage to disguise it quite well, but you luckily are the expert. What's happening? Well, it's my job to explain these yes. complex economic and business issues and you'll read in the newspapers and you'll see on the internet that retail sales are up in November and indeed that's the the number they're 4.2 percent higher in November than compared to November 2021. The similar figure in October was just 1.6 percent higher so you'd think if you look at those numbers mm. that retail sales are now accelerating. Who says that the economy is having a hard time? Hurrah! But if you drill down into those numbers Bev what that 4.2% increase last month compared to the same month in 2021 represents is the volume of... It, it's, it's the value of retail sales, ah, right? OK. And what's the rate of inflation? Huge. 11.1%. Yeah. So the actual volume of retail sales, the amount of stuff we're buying is less, significantly less, right. than in November 2021, despite Black Friday, despite all the promotions. So retail sales, in real terms, as we say, after inflation, they're 4.2% mm. up in terms of value. But in real terms, what you actually get mm. for the money you're spending, they're down. And that is worrying because it means mm. less uh, margins for retailers. It, and a lot of retailers, particularly retailers on high streets in, mm. in towns around the country and regional centres that have been struggling, they're less likely to make that money that they need to at Christmas mm. to keep themselves above water for oh, the rest it's bleak, of the year. isn't it? Um, I and mean, also, we've got these strikes, and, yeah. and Sam Lister from The Express was reading a stat earlier about the £1.7 I think, cost to the economy of the strikes alone from the trains. That's what the British Retail Consortium are saying, that because... And that number actually came out before these additional strikes in the run-up to the week before oh, wow. Christmas that the RMT have announced just overnight. Yeah. The RMT say there's going to be strikes on the 13th and the 14th and the 16th and the 17th of December, and now they're saying that there will also be strikes in the run-up to Christmas too. So this is really yeah. going to... Whatever you think of the strikes, whatever you think of what the RMT have, whether they're in the right, whether the government's in the right, the train operating companies, it, you just cannot deny that this is going to absolutely hammer our retailers and our broader mm. hospitality industry. It's hospitality that relies even more than the retailers on what they call, you know, the golden period yeah. of the year from Halloween through to New Year's Day. Yeah. That is the time when they make their money, they build up their surpluses so they can survive in the leaner times, January, February, March, when everybody's nursing their credit card bills and trying to keep their family finances on track. I remember, I think you were in the studio with me a few months ago, and we were talking to a couple of people from the hospitality industry about how long they thought they had, and they speculated that they would probably have until February 2023 if things didn't change, February, March. Do you think that's changed at all? No, I don't. No. I actually, whether or not that is a, a realistic assessment, Absolutely. the assessment can't have got better since then mm. because, of course, we've had this RMT strike, we've had a global mm. slowdown as interest rates have risen around the world, uh, economies are uh, contracting. We know that the UK economy is contracting at the moment, getting smaller. That's according to the Office for National Statistics. Mm. Just yesterday, the CBI said the economy will be smaller overall next year as well, 0.4% lower. One good bit of news is that that 0.4% contraction is less serious than the 1.4% that the Office for Bunch mm. Budget Responsibility are predicting. So in other words, the business leaders aren't as gloomy as the official forecasters yeah. in Whitehall. So that's one bit of good news. And we can look to the bright side in the sense that unemployment still remains low in a lot, many parts of the country, not all, but in many parts of the country, if you want work, there is work available. Yes. So I don't yet think we're back in a mm. 1970s type situation, early 80s, mm. of spiralling unemployment. Unemployment is still quite low. And almost everyone believes that next year the cost of living squeeze is going to abate. Those CBI yes, numbers so. yesterday, they said inflation will be about 5 or 6% next year rather than 11%. Okay. So there are signs of light at the end of Thank the tunnel. Thank you, Liam.